Hey guys, it's me Connor here from TGN. Now today I'm going to be going over the talents, the glyphs, the armor, and the rotation for a Fury Warrior PvP. Now, the rotation isn't quite a rotation as much as mashing whatever buttons you can, but I'll get into that a bit later, and you'll see what I'm talking about. So, anyways, getting into the talents... You can copy this if you want to. I mean, this is what I have at the moment. I might be changing this later on, depending on what people say. I do take constructive criticism, and I will use it. Um, so yeah, if you have something useful to point out that you think would help me out, please just leave it down in the comments below, and I will use it if I believe that it's necessary, and it'll make my pvp a lot better so anyways this is all my build um some things that you should definitely get would be piercing howl everything that branches off death wish heroic fury skirmisher and just basically follow mine because i find that's what i have best for the fury side of it at least for the arms I might go I might take one talent point out of tactical mastery and put it in deep wounds and maybe move this uh insight over to deep wounds as well. I don't know yet. I will I'll think about it. I might test it out, see how that works for me. But anyways, this is what I have so far. So, yeah. Uh, now getting into the glyphs. I have a Glyph of Slam, Glyph of Bloodthirst, and Glyph of Raging Blow. Now, each of these are really good because Glyph of Slam and Glyph of Raging Blow increase the critical strike of those two by 5%. So, you're getting an extra 5% chance to crit when you use them. Increase the damage of blood Bloodthirst by 10%. That's a great thing to have because Bloodthirst is one of your major abilities that you will be using because I believe it's on like a 3 second cooldown. For my major glyphs, I have Piercing Howl, Death Wish, and Intercept. Death Wish you definitely must get. Piercing Howl, you can go without it, but I mean, for PvP, I mean, I might... No, I wouldn't even... I don't think I would really change anything. Yet, at least. Unless I found something that was just absolutely amazing that I had to give up. But I mean, for right now... What I have works great for me. Glyph of Intercept um, increases the duration of your stun from Intercept by one second, and Death Wish re um, you no longer take extra damage from when you use Death Wish because when you use Death Wish, I believe it you do thirty five percent more damage, but you also get an extra twenty percent, ten percent. Sorry. So with this glyph, you take no extra damage, and you're basically going to stay alive and do a shit ton of damage within a low period of time. Glyph of Berserk Rage. I took this off for a little while to see how to see if I could ch swap it out with something else, but it didn't work for me because I got so used to being able to rely on that eight rage that I'd pop my Berserk rage and i wouldn't have that eight rage and i couldn't do anything so i put this back on and i've been doing a bit better glyph of demoralizing shout increases the duration by 15 seconds and area of effect by 50 seconds by 50 percent sorry now this um it makes it so that your enemy deals 10 percent less damage so i mean when they 10% less damage, and then if you were to, let's say, pop your Recklessness and Death Wish, you would be able to do a ton of damage, and you would get hit for s not that much during that time. And then, of course, Glyph of Bloody Healing increases the healing received from Bloodthirst by 40%. Now, I definitely need this because my twos partner is a Warlock, so I really don't have any heals to rely on except my Enrage Regeneration and my Health Stone, so... I need all the healing I can get, and I find that this gives me a fair bit. I might trade out one of my 
talents for something with victory rush but i don't think i will because there's almost no point in doing it when you only get to use it once a match if you're lucky because if your partner takes the kill then you're swooped um so now getting into the armor now when i first started doing is i used all the bloodied gear that i could get my hands on from gaining money from the quests in mount hyjal and twilight highlands and everything like that so i saved that money up through the 80 to 85 leveling and then I bought the bloodied gear and I actually did this because I wanted to get into heroics and get my heroic gear but it turned out it that I just had it sitting in my bag because of it didn't have the stats that I wanted it to so it just sat in my bag and boosted up my item level but now I use just the gloves because I've replaced everything else and the reason I've done this is because everything else that I replaced didn't give me honor I mean didn't give me resil except for the four set and I was missing the shoulders so I mean I kept the gloves because the gloves were there they give me resil and the extra resil I'm gonna keep it until well I only have one more thing to replace before my gloves so that's pretty good I will be getting my axe tomorrow actually my partner and i are capped this week but we will get more tomorrow and i'll be able to use my vicious axe which will be sweet replace my heroic weapon but um there is a trinket that you can get from one of the conquest the sorry quartermasters and you can get this trinket and it's just a like insignia of the horde and what it is is it basically does this exact same thing except it doesn't have crit um or mastery or depending on what you use um it doesn't have that but the it does have the remove all in movement impairing effects but it's on a five minute cooldown instead of a two or you could spend i think it's an extra 180 108 honor or something to get a better one that will give you a two minute cooldown and some resilience so that's about it for my character and the armor I'm using now when I go to when I go into PvP the first thing I do is I'll make sure to pop my battles my uh, battle shout my blood fury because blood fury for an orc um, increases my attack power for by um, 1170 that's a lot of attack power so that's a pretty good racial to have and then I'll also use my berserk rage and then when I get close enough I will use my demoralizing shout because being able to survive that extra little bit longer because they're doing 10% less damage helps a lot now the first thing I'll do is I'll use my intercept and then as soon as I get it to the target I cast Colossal Smash because it bypasses, I think it's 20% of their armor, if I'm not mistaken. Um, oh. I don't know, you bypass their entire armor, sorry. Um, for six seconds, so I mean, I'm thinking about macroing Colossal Smash, Death Wish, and Recklessness all to one, and just as soon as I rush in there with my intercept just casting that macro and then just taking them out instantly because they it'll be such a dps um god i can't think of the word it'll be such burst dps that they won't be able to keep up with it and i have tried it before and it does work fairly well so basically when it comes down to your attacking moves you're going to want to use Bloodthirst, you're going to want to use Raging Blow when it procs, and same with Slam. And when you get above 60 or 70 Rage, you're going to want to use Heroic Strike. Now, when you do get the kill, and you're low, and you're about 70% health, 
I definitely recommend using the victory rush but if it's not there it also does I think 10k I've gotten some 10k crits on it so it's definitely a good thing to have as well now one other thing that I like to point out is there was actually a guy in my last video that commented telling me you shouldn't have your um, intimidating shout glyphed and I actually tried that out and it's been working really well for me because I believe my target stays where I want them to but everyone else will scatter and it works out amazingly for me and if they do run away or trinket out of it I can intercept them char uh, stunning them for I think it's like four or five seconds and then just blowing my cooldowns if I have them and they go down easy so you're also going to want to spam execute when they dip below 20% health now this move is really good for using for PvP um, I definitely would recommend using it but I don't find a point in glyph in uh, talenting into it because these two talent points can go towards something better because you're not going to be using it like you would against a raid boss so I do have one macro for my shield wall and I'll show you guys that right now and basically what it does is it pops me in a defensive stance and I have a PvP set too I think I have it with me no I'm missing my shield but it will equip my shield it will cast shield wall and then it'll cast me back into berserker stance but for some reason the equip set um, PvP 1 back to my two-handed weapons will not work so I actually had to make a new macro that will just put me in berserker stance if I miss the berserk stance because you have to click it like three times for it to work and then I just I because of the Razor Naga I have the two buttons on the left most uh, click that are linked to these so yeah I also have shattering throw where it will put me into battle stance cast shattering throw and then put me back into berserker stance so that's about it for my PvP videos. I will have some PvP linked to this, so please guys, um, it might be only be one game, but it's still one game, so I hope you guys like it. Alright here guys, so me and Pickles are just going to do some twos, and this is just a quick little 45 second clip. So we have a Shammy and a DK, and we weren't in Skype this time, so I'm sitting here typing, and I'm looking down at my keyboard, and I don't even notice that the DK is so close to me, so... Anyways, for some reason it didn't even attack me or anything, so I intercept the chamois and I blow all my cooldowns and I take them out as if there's nothing to it. And then it's just a 2 on 1 with a DK and he goes down, I mean 20k, like I just did 40k there in absolutely no time at all and I just heroic leap and he's done. So that's basically it for that video guys. Thanks for watching. Please tell me what I could do to improve on my videos if there is anything. I do take constructive criticism as I said earlier in the video. I take that fairly well and I'm willing to learn from other people and what other people have to say. So please guys rate, comment, subscribe and if there's anything you'd like to see please put it down in the description and I will do that. Thanks guys. It's been Connor.